Welcome to the Top Advisor Marketing Podcast brought to you by Proudmouth. I'm your host, Matt Halloran. Being your own loud is not new to marketing, but the mindset, strategies, and resources to help you get there are evolving faster than this industry is keeping up. It is time to find a new perspective on what works why and how to move your business forward. Listen as I interview guests to help you learn from them how to be your own loud. Let's get to the show. Hello and welcome to another Top Advisor Marketing Podcast. I am your host, Matt Halloran. We just created this list, and Nicole, I don't know if you actually saw this on LinkedIn today, but it absolutely blew up. We wrote every person that we could think of who was a woman in financial services who was very, very influential. And within 49 minutes, we had over 50 comments and over a thousand impressions. I think that there is a massive change within the industry that it is starting to shift like it should have shifted many, many years ago, but you know, hey, better late than never. So Nicole Mendorf is our guest today. We're gonna to be talking about the kind of marketing that she's done, the books that she's published, and this Live It list, which I'm really excited about bringing it to our audience. So Nicole, welcome to the show. Thanks, thanks for having me. All right, let's talk about your story because I loved when we had our pre-call and we were chatting a little bit about who you are and kind of how you've gotten to where you are. Let's talk about your story. How did you grow up in financial services? Never planned on it. <laughs> I I really, like, I actually had this horrible experience in sixth grade. I was always the advanced classes. Back then they called them challenge courses. And I was always in all the advanced classes. And in sixth grade, my math challenge teacher was gone for the day. So I was with everyone else. And the teacher called me to the front of the room on the chalkboard to do this problem. And I did it and I sat down and I, I looked and I, I was like, gosh, I, I think I did something wrong. And I went to go say something like, hey, can I go correct that? But I didn't. And the teacher made this huge big deal out of it. Like, oh, we have this challenge student in here and she did this problem wrong. And like, how could this possibly be? And immediately from that moment forward, I was never in math classes that were challenge classes. Like I, I literally, like this teacher like destroyed my confidence in, and, and so what I thought was, is okay, I can't do math, which means I can't do numbers, which means I can't do money. And so I had this whole like fear of money and fear of finance and fast forward, went to college, started dating a man that was a finance major. He dreamt of being a stockbroker his whole life. And that is how I ended up in this industry, which I just think is completely crazy because it's the last thing. Being a wealth advisor is the last thing I ever would have thought I was going to be. I, I wanted to go to law school. I wanted to be like Madeleine Albright. I wanted to change, change the world and do things from an international perspective and make make a huge difference and leave a legacy. You, and, and the fun th the part about this is you're doing this now, right? Because you've got the live it list. You've got all of these great marketing opportunities, but it's the relationships that you've built with your clients that you are making that level of impact. Uh, let, let's talk a little bit about uh, the practice makeup now. Uh, so, you know, how many people do you have on your team and stuff like that? And then I want to jump into the live it list if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah. So fast forward now, you know, I, I got divorced. I started all over again in 2012. I'm a survivor of domestic violence. And so that's been a big portion of, of my story and my inspiration, really. Like here as a single mom, if I can own a 9,000 square foot commercial building and start over from scratch in 2012, like if I can do this, like anyone can do, can do anything. So I have a full-time marketing gal. I have two client concierges, and then we have three relationship managers. One's a senior relationship manager. And then we have a wealth advisor and then I've got two personal assistants and we are hiring one more person before the year is out. And the plan is to hire two or three more people next year. We're growing dramatically fast. And I believe it's from all of the marketing that we've done. Like Malcolm Gladwell's book, The Tipping Point, that, I mean, I have so many great books, but that's one of my favorites. And I really feel like we've finally now hit that with the practice and with the team and just the structure of everything to make it that we can do so much in such a short period of time. I love the fact that you have taken in a, a, a negative 
aspect of, of your life and turned it into not only motivation, but also stuff to help your clients. One of the things that we talk about, Nicole, a lot is when you're unapologetically yourself, everything changes, right? This is how you become your own loud. We have be your own loud as a big component of who we are here at Proudmouth. And I love you are the epitome of be your own loud. You are you. It's, you know, it's, you know, the, the, you know, let's go sort of thing. And with that, you created this live it list. What is it? Let's talk a little bit about the origins and then how you you use it within your practice. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. And, and I, I felt embarrassed to share my story because, you know, life's supposed to look perfect, right? Like Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff where I was supposed to be happy all the time. And I ended up on stage at this women's conference and I was on with a panel and somehow it came up that, and I opened up and shared my domestic violence background. And I got off the stage and there was a line out the room. Like they actually had to shoo shoo me, <laughs> me out. And all these women were coming up to me. They're like, Oh, I'm in the same boat. Or I went through this and like, thank you for sharing your story. And that was like the big impetus for me of like, wow, like if I'm just me and authentic and real, like that's where the real magic happens. And the same thing happened with the live it list. And so for me, it was August 4th of 2010 was the first time that the 911 phone call actually went through. My daughter was six months old and my son was two. And from the outside, my life looked perfect, right? Big home, boat, swimming pool, you know, multiple cars. I was doing my radio show every Saturday. By that time, I think I'd written maybe three books or maybe two books. And so, you know, it, it looked like I had this perfect life, but I, I didn't, I didn't love any of it. Like I actually like hate it. I don't like the word I hate, but I, ha I hated every aspect because none of it I had picked. I didn't pick my career, didn't pick the house. Like <laughs> I didn't pick my lifestyle. And so I'm like, what, how, okay, how did I end up here? And how do I get out of this? And I am a former figure skater and I'm so blessed. One of my figure skating coaches had her master's in psychology and she just always worked with me with the power of the mind. She always had me write out lists and be just very goal driven. And so I'm like, okay, well, let me, I, I, I had stopped traveling. Like I physically was numb and I'm like, well, let me rewrite my bucket list because the average divorce takes about a year. And so let me just write, write my bucket list and do one thing a month for a year because, and I was looking at this as like, this is going to be a distractor <laughs> or this is something, you know, like one thing a month that I could look forward to. I did not realize the transformation that would happen from it. And so I wrote down 12 things and I just committed to myself to do one thing a month. I met with my best friend from college and I said, Hey, you know, here's my 12 things. And one of them is to drive a race car. So will you go up to Northern Minnesota with me and drive a race car? And he's like, Nick, anything you do, you don't just put hundred percent into it. You put 180. So like you need to go to a real speedway. So I bought a ticket, hopped on a plane that weekend to go to Vegas. He wouldn't come with me. <laughs> so I went by myself and on the plane right there, you know how you have that person that has to talk to you the whole time. <laughs> I had, I had that gentleman. Oh. And for some reason, like, you know, my, my personal life was just a mess. You know, I, I, I just, everything was just a mess. And for some reason I felt compelled to stay in this women's book club that I was in and we were reading Steve Jobs book. And so like, I had to finish this book on the plane. So I'm like trying to read this book and he keeps interrupting me, trying to talk to me. And he couldn't understand why I was not going to Vegas to gamble. I'm like, I'm a wealth advisor. I gamble with people's money every single day. I don't need to go to gamble. Vegas to gamble. And eventually I said, look, I just rewrote my bucket list and I'm doing one thing a month for a year. He finally got quiet and he's like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. He's like, you're so young. Is it cancer? And so that's where I was like, I can't do this. Like I can't go around. Cause when you say the term bucket list, like people think you're dying. And I just, I'm like, I can't do this for a year. Like I have so much negativity already. Like I need to put a positive spin on this. So I just started calling it the live it list. And I was like, I'm doing one thing a month on my live it list. And people are like, what? Like, what is that? Well, then I learned one in three Americans is happy. I learned that if you spend more money on experiences, you're going to be happier than if you spend money on things. And I had kind of this aha moment of like, oh my gosh, like this ties into like financial planning. Like this ties into money. Like here's how I can like transform this and, and really transform myself, let alone transform people across the U.S., and so now I have my own foundation. We grant Live It List experiences. We have Live It List journals. 
We now are doing live it list trips. So I just got back recently. I took 20 people to Napa. Um, next year, we're headed to Egypt and doing a private tour of King Tut's tomb. And so I really like, I love every second of everything that I do. And I believe like out of the worst things in life come some of the best. And I really believe if you're truly authentic to yourself and figure that piece out, like the stuff just happens. And so I've tied in with travel, with motivation and all of those things and, and money and transforming people's lives. And I feel now the, the amount of people that follow me on LinkedIn and now I'm doing more public speaking and flying to different places and hopping on stages, I really feel like I've got my calling and I feel like I'm do, I am that Madeline Albright. I am that Ruth Bader Ginsburg. I am making change. I don't know, and I don't want this to, I, I want to highlight this because how you as a financial advisor help your clients have experiences instead of stuff. I want to just touch on that very quickly because, and you lived this, most of us do. Oh, well, I'm going to be happy if. Right. And it's usually something material, cars, boats, houses, another house, X amount of money in the bank. But what you just said there is you're shifting that entire paradigm. If you as a financial services professional can help them have these experiences, guess who gets credited for those experiences? Talk about deepening the relationship. And now your meetings change because, Nicole, you're talking to them about going to a private tour of Boom Touch Doom. That is so unbelievable. Right. It's so like, it's so cool. I mean, I just, I believe things happen for a reason and you meet people for a reason. I'm like, wow, like I get it. Like, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Like my own love for travel, my own love of motivating and inspiring, my own love of writing, like all of these things I can tie in and help people change how they think about money. And so now every client that comes to us gets a financial plan and it's not just you know, yes, of course, we're helping people get to retirement, the kids to college, but we ask, what is on your live it list? And so it's so focused on the positive things and the good things. And we're helping people make decisions, not necessarily from a negative standpoint, but from a positive standpoint and really helping them live their lives and really be happy. So there's our first golden nugget of the podcast, right? The idea that you're going to change the way that your your clients see not only their relationship to their money, because we're going to be working on helping them with experiences, but it's also going to deepen and change the relationship and the conversations that you have with clients by focusing on the live it list. Now I'm going to switch gears here because there's we have a lot of <laughs> a lot of stuff to cover, Nicole. I want to talk about your books because you have been a machine. How are you able to do that? So we've had a couple of guests, uh, more than a couple of guests who are like, man, Matt, I'm never going to write another book. How, you, but you've written so many. How have you had the discipline and set aside the time to execute such a big project? I write when I travel <laughs> and I, I love, I love to travel and I'm, I'm still a, a paper and pen person. And so what will, what will happen? I've just had to put it on pause because now I spend my time actually on these pl recent plane rides because I, I don't travel in the summer. I'm in Minnesota, so it's gorgeous here. And so I'm kind of behind on my LinkedIn content. And so that's where these recent trips, I'll just spend time in my little notes section, writing small, short, you know, snippet things to then submit to go onto LinkedIn. But when I'm writing the book and I actually, I, I pulled out my copy of my next book, my fifth book that I'm working on. And I put it out like in five trips because I'm like, I just, I need a break <laughs> from writing. But what happens is it's in a word document format, but it's printed out and I sit and I bring that with me and I edit it hand printing. And I know this is not efficient. <laughs> like this is not the best use of my time, but there's just something for me like, when I write, like I love to write and actually like feel the paper and I get it. There's all these new little iPad things or whatever that's supposed to like feel like paper. Like I just haven't, I'm old. <laughs> like I haven't subscribed to that, but I sit and I just write and I write and I write and write. And so with my fifth book, Who Pays? What happened was, is, I mean, that was over probably a three year period that I was writing. And so I then, I was like, I need an editor because I had written a story and then six months later on another trip, I kind of wrote the same story, but a little bit of a, you know, different spin to it. And so I hired someone to basically say like, look, I have all of this stuff 
and I need you to put it together so that it's funny, that it makes sense (laughs) and that, you know, my chapter outline, you know, makes sense. And the great thing about that was, you know, she, I hadn't put anything about, it's about a book about money and relationships and couples. And I hadn't really put anything in there about blended families. And so she's like, I need you to write about blended families. And so then that's where I was really specific. And so some people hire, you know, a book coach or someone to help them write. I really kind of, I'm so self-motivated that I just write, 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 write. But I needed someone, an editor to help me put it together to make it be amazing. Because I really believe like, Anything that I do and and I want it to be authentic, real, and I want it to be good and I want it to come from the heart. Like, I don't want to just write a book to write a book. And that's why I kind of put this current one or this next one off to the side because I'm just like, I have too many other things going on right now. I don't, I don't want to just write to write. I want to write to inspire and make it and make a difference. Well, so there's there's two things that I want to uh, pull out of that. The the first one is a, a lot of people put really ridiculous time frames on getting their book done, and you said that that one took you three years. So I just wanted to you know kind of uh, exclamation point that. Uh, but the other thing is, so one of the other kind of key messages that we try to have in this podcast is to rise above the noise, not contribute to it, right? And so part of being your own loud and unapologetically being yourself is really getting your voice out in the marketplace. We don't need another meh book on finances. We need a book that's going to make people say, oh my God, I can read this and make actual changes. So that's another great example of you rising above the noise with the content that you create, which I personally really thank you for. You know, as a person who's done lots of these episodes, it's so refreshing to meet people like you who are really trying to fundamentally make a difference and make an engaging difference. This stuff's pretty dry, man. I mean, it could be pretty boring and it's magnificent when somebody can make it exciting and interesting. Well, what was really super cool that came from this this last book is once I came out with it, I had a, a client that said, you know, hey, do you realize that you saved our marriage? And so I was like, wow. I'm like, and I and I've always joked these last couple of years, like, because I I went with my own personal stuff, I like read every book on psychology, every book on sociopaths, narcissism, like, you know, how do how does the mind even work even more? And so there, I would joke, you know, people are like, oh, you're a wealth advisor. I'm like, no, really, I'm a therapist because <laughs> like, so much of what we do is dealing with emotions. So after then I came out with the book, we came out with these conversation cards. And so it's a, it's a deck of cards. There's 52 of them to help people have a money date and have that conversation about money. And so that's where, like, if you're coming from it from a fun, I just always try to come from it from an authentic and a fun standpoint. And like, how can I give something to someone or how can I help someone transform things or make a, a change so that we're changing their behavior because that's what truly is going to help change their money. Not just like, Oh, let me go home and talk to my spouse about money and talk about it once. Like that really, that's not transformational. Whereas helping someone actually physically make some change or psychologically make some change. That's where you make some true impact. One of my favorite questions to ask is, you know, what is that one marketing thing that has fundamentally changed your practice? And I don't know how you're going to choose one, but let's kind of let's 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 hone that down. So I'm going to change the way that I ask the question, if you don't mind, which is what has been the most profitable marketing thing that you've done probably within the last five years? It's the it's the TV and and the radio stuff, because I don't pay to be on TV and radio. And so, and and why that is, and it's not, I look at this business and I look at everything in life that it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. It's not like you're going to be on TV today and get a client. <laughs> that doesn't happen. But me being on TV regularly, and it's that being in front of someone consistently, because I mean, way back when, when I went to college, I have a degree also in in marketing as well as international business. But with marketing, I will always remember sitting in this marketing class, the professor is like, look, you know, something, you have to see something six times before it actually like triggers in your head. And then you see it all the time. It's like, you, you know, you're like, Oh, maybe I should test drive a Tesla. And then all of a sudden, like every car that you see is a Tesla car, the same thing happens. And so me being on TV and radio really set that tone to be top of mind for people. And that's what my team now thinks that's hilarious because like someone will call and they're like, yeah, I listened to Nicole when she did a radio show. And they're like, 
oh my gosh, seriously? <laughs> like, or, you know, I heard Nicole speak and it was like 21 years ago, but, that, and I'm like, oh, my job or my focus now is okay. How can I get someone to call me now rather than wait 21 years <laughs> to call and get some, get some help. But well, let's talk about TV and radio. So, so you're not paying to be on television, which is not normal within our industry. It's usually pay to play. What do the TV spots look like? Let's let's talk about that. Yeah. So once a month, I, I was doing things weekly, but as a full time single mom and a full time business owner, it's I can do one. I can do once a month because then there's always these additional podcasts or additional other TV things that will come up or speaking engagements. But once a month, I'm on a local station and I send them the topics and the ideas. And I'm usually, I could be anywhere on from two minutes to five minutes usually. And you're being, you're being interviewed. And so one thing that I learned from when I did my radio show is I sometimes had two hours, if not three to fill. And when you are having a guest on, because I, let's say a, a state planning attorney, I would have them on. What I learned is, okay, a TV anchor is asking me a question. Yeah, they are listening to my answer, but they're busy thinking, what's the next question that they're going to ask? And okay, so I really learned when I did my radio show, I learned how to help the people that are anchors and the people that are interviewing me. And so that's why like, they love to have you on again if you make their job easy. So send out a pitch, be consistent, give them talking points. Like these are the five things of what's important to do before the year is over. Or, you know, why should you have a kid, kid have a Roth IRA or what, you know, like whatever your focus is or whatever your interest is. And for me, it was developing a niche in divorce. That's what made me different. I mean, I am a woman, which is unique in this industry, but the divorce angle is what made me different and unique and first helped get me into the world of TV and radio. But for now, it's, you know, I'm on once a month at a minimum with one station. And then the other places we'll just call randomly. So like it was a few weeks ago, we had the social security was the, the, the COLA was increased dramatically. And like that same week, we had the whole student loan issue. And then I had my regular TV monthly spot, which I was talking about. It was like, I think it was the week of Halloween. It was, you know, what, what's scary about money and how can you make money not scary? And so that's where like, I, I, there isn't anything that I really haven't talked about <laughs> when it comes to money from, you know, tied into travel or tied into things that you find interesting. And the whole point is take something that's very boring and make it as fun as possible because I, my goal really is to laugh as much as I possibly can with the TV anchors because you want it to be natural and you want it to be fun because money in itself is so stressful and so intimidating. You want to be engaging. They, you want the TV reporter to call you back. But then you also want to have that viewer that's watching you, like see your personality and then they're attracted to you. They're then going to go to your website. And that's the thing, like, I mean, I, it astounds me that I'll, I'll listen to a top advisor and they're like, yes, in our first meeting, we do this. And in our second meeting, we do this. And then in our third meeting, we do this and we just go over the plan and stuff. And I'm like, I sit down with someone <laughs> like for 20 minutes and then they're handed off to my relationship manager that's de dedicated to their account because they people feel like they know me because I share my story and I share who I am and you're and I'm as many places as I possibly can. Be. I, I remember when I went through my first media training, it was with a guy named Jason Lahita, who now runs something called street cred, which is a PR company here uh, in financial services. And one of the things that he said was if you make the journalist smile, the probability of them having you back, because if you make their time fun, because most people are so nervous, Nicole, like, oh my God, I'm being interviewed by the Wall Street Journal. Yeah, if you go in and you're like, I'm being interviewed by the Wall Street Journal, it's such a different energy. And I already feel that from you. But you said something there too that I just, I have to highlight because this we believe is the power of podcasting. It is the way that you can build a relationship with people when it is convenient for them, but you're scaling your personality. You're scaling your personality. People come in and say, Nicole, I just feel like I know you. I've seen you on TV. I've listened to your radio show. I saw you speak. When I go to conferences, when my partner goes to conferences, you know, we're 400 episodes into this. We have people come up to us all the time. Matt, I really feel like I know you because I listen to the show. Nicole, I don't know them at all, right? But I'm so honored and, and thankful that they take the time. They take the time to build the relationship with me. And I'm sure this happens with you. Your closing percentage went up 
exponentially because people walk in and say, okay, I already know who she is. I know who she works with. I feel like I know her and her firm. I'm opting in to do business. And that is amazing marketing. Yes. One thing I, so I didn't have media training, but I had a media training experience. I, I, I always wear glasses. I've, I mean, these are my little black light glasses, but I always wear, wear glasses and, and contacts. And it was one morning and I got up, I work out really early in the morning and I was just like, I'm so tired. I'm not going to put my contacts in. I'm not going to put my tennis shoes on. So I walked into my workout room and I had left a weight on the ground and I walked right into it. And it was one of those typical days where, you know, I was giving a presentation and I was meeting with an attorney and then I was meeting with a mortgage broker and then I had, you know, a networking lunch and then I had two client meetings in the afternoon and then a class to teach in the evening. So finally it was like four o'clock ish before I had to teach this evening class. Um, I ran to urgent care and I took off my shoe and my toe was like black <laughs> He's like, uh, yeah, it's broken. He's like, there's nothing we can do. He's like, you know, you basically just, you know, here's some Vicodin <laughs> and good luck. <laughs> we can tape it. So I taught, I somehow, I don't know how I got my shoe back on and I get, I get to I teach the class in the evening. Well, in the morning I was set to be on TV. So I take a Vicodin and I go to bed and I'm just one of those people, like I'm super sensitive to stuff, like super sensitive to alcohol and things. And so I wake up in the morning and like the room is just spinning and like, I put my head in my hands. I'm like, Oh my gosh, like, how am I going to do Like, how am I going to do this? So I get dressed, I get to the TV station and I'm sitting in the green room, green room and they have a show on or the person on before me is about food and they're like cooking and I'm like, my head's in my hands. And the producer comes in. She's like, we can reschedule. I was like, no, no, no. Like, I, once you say no, I said no once to Fox business and they have not had me back. Like you can't say no. I'm like, no, I'm going on. Well, so I had, I was sitting on this couch. I had my arm like rested up. I had my legs crossed going through the interview. I leave and then I go home and I just rest. I go to the office the next day and this wealth advisor comes up to me and he's like, what media training have you done? That was like the best interview I've ever seen of you. He's like, you were so funny and so relaxed. I was like, uh, it's called Vicodin. <laughs> so I learned from that moment, relax, have fun, laugh. And, and it, it was a very pivotal moment. And that, that anchor, that journalist is like a super good friend of mine. And every time we see each other, we just laugh about that story. That's so. awesome. All right. My favorite question to ask as we wrap up the show today is... What should I have asked you that I didn't? Oh, that's a good question. Where am I headed next? Okay. All right. Take it away. Um, so really with, with everything in, in marketing and everything that I've done, I've had so many aha moments along the way. Like one, like of the live it list of writing books of the radio, of the TV. And like, I started first, you know, focusing on divorce and not, you know, it's, it gets exhausting. And so now like, I'm, I'm now transforming and, and it makes me feel really old, but transforming my business. As of January 1, one of our wealth advisors is basically becoming a partner. He's going to be a senior wealth advisor. We're promoting two other people. And so I'm spending more of my time really on the creative side and doing more of those marketing things. So public speaking and actually developing a whole online program for couples, let alone also I'm going to be developing something for wealth advisors because I now am speaking at conferences to wealth advisors as that value add of how do you market yourself? Like, okay, I am not a brain surgeon. Like I'm not an expert, but I have 20, almost 25,000 people or something that follow me on LinkedIn. Obviously I'm doing something right. And to help other people and help other advisors grow their practices and do the same thing because the typical wealth advisor is not loving market, marketing. Your typical wealth advisor loves the numbers and is very analytical. And so how to really help those people grow their practices and, and help make change and help change people's lives. Nicole, thank you so much. This was freaking awesome. I'm honored to know you. Thank you for giving our audience some, some of your time and your brain today. I really appreciate you being on the show. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everybody. So Nicole just said it there at the end you know, not a lot of advisors love marketing, right? If you don't love marketing, you have one or two choices. One, 
hire somebody internally to go ahead and take care of all of your marketing needs or outsource it to somebody that you can trust. And of course, we would love to be that company that you outsource to. But most importantly, if you have a team member right now and you want to up your marketing this next coming year and years to come, please join the Pod Rocket Academy for free. It's free. Take Podcasting 101. You can learn how to do everything you could possibly need to know how to execute your first podcast, get your show out there, and get people listening. All right. The other thing, live it list. Go to uh, prosperwell.com. We're going to make sure that we have uh, links and nicolemittendorf.com. We're going to make sure all of those links that Nicole was talking about uh, so that you can maybe get some of those cards that she was talking about, buy a couple of her books, and then find out really how to help implement the Live It List into your practice. So for Nicole and all of us here at Proudmouth, we'll see you on the other side of the mic very soon. Thanks for listening to the Top Advisor Marketing Podcast brought to you by Proudmouth. If you want to know more about how you can be your own loud, visit us at proudmouth.com and sign up for the Pod Rocket Academy. Through courses and office hours led by professional podcast producers and digital marketers, you will learn everything you need to know to become the trusted subject matter expert you were meant to be.